When a dutiful cop named Alex Murphy was fatally injured on the clock, his body was intercepted by a bunch of scientists who ensured that he lived on by using his body as a base to create a new entity known as Robocop. The Robocop program aimed to develop cybernetically enhanced soldiers who could work alongside the police units, and Alex's body was then used to create a full body prosthetic cyborg with very limited memories of Murphy's past life. Robocop then became a ruthless killing machine with some unique physiological features that made him one of a kind. Let us explore his anatomy and look at the inner workings of this killer cyborg known as Robocop. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. How was a dutiful Alex Murphy turned into Robocop? Alex Murphy used to be a dutiful cop in the Detroit Police Department, and he was even married to a woman named Ellen. The two had a son named James Murphy. After having some trouble with his partner, Murphy transferred to the Metro West Precinct, which was also working alongside the OCP organization to reconstruct the police department. OCP was also trying to develop a new cyborg that would work alongside the police and assist them while Murphy and the other officers worked in an understaffed station with minimal resources. While chasing after the Boddicker gang, Alex was ambushed by a few gang members and disarmed by them. The gang finally took him to their boss, Clarence Boddicker, who tortured Murphy and even shot his right arm off. The entire gang targeted and shot at him for fun until Clarence finally delivered the final blow. Murphy was later discovered by his partner, Ann Lewis, who rushed him to the hospital. The surgeons tried to give him shocks to bring him back to life, but he was soon pronounced dead. Murphy had signed a waiver with the OCP organization to use his body after death, and they used his body to construct the cyborg known as Robocop as a part of their new program to deal with the understaffing issues at the police stations. Some of his organs were then used to create Robocop, while some of his memories were erased, and he was even programmed to kill and deliver harsh justice. Holy Christ. Holy Christ. How many human body parts are inside Robocop? When Robocop was introduced as a cyborg, it was explained that some of his bodily structure was created in a lab and then fitted onto Alex Murphy's body while some of Alex's body organs still remained intact. An essential component required to create Robocop was Alex's brain, which most certainly remained a part of his body structure as a cyborg. His brain was covered with a metal skull to ensure that it was not harmed by bullets or external weapons. Besides his brain, some elements of his spinal column, along with his face and tongue, were also used to create Robocop. These elements were fitted onto a metal skull to give him a human appearance, and some theories also suggest that his lungs stayed intact during the transformation. Some of Alex Murphy's nerves were still connected to his spine, which implies that some elements of his nervous structure were also present inside Robocop's body. What part of his existence is human, and what part is robotic? Robocop is still Alex Murphy's brain and cerebral cortex, and his entire brain was intact and only put into a new body. While Murphy's brain was reprogrammed in some ways to adjust to an artificial body, he was still the same person in essence, and he eventually even remembered all the details of his past life and regained his memories. He's still the same human, the only difference being that his mind is being programmed to act in a certain way. At the end of the day, Murphy's dominant personality emerged, and he finally regained control over his mind and a new body. He still had his underlying morals and ethics, but they were briefly clouded after becoming Robocop. Eventually, we could see that Murphy's reflex actions and behaviors start emerging again and he gains control over his bodily systems. In the first film, Robocop initially finds it hard to go against any set directives that forbid him from attacking any OCP employees, but he eventually manages to find a way to go around these rules and ensure that he delivers justice. While his body is robotic, Murphy's existence is driven by his mind, which continues to act in human ways. How did Robocop's biometric sensors work? Robocop also had internal biometric sensors installed within his body, allowing him to assess any person in front of him. He could access information from police databases, CCTVs, and even cell phone networks while using these biometric sensors to scan a person's biometrics and learn their identity. He could even monitor anyone and understand if they are injured, and he could even sense a person's heartbeat, stress, blood pressure, and many other details without touching them. These sensors proved to be quite valuable when Robocop wished to detect if a person was lying to him or being being truthful, and he can study their bodily reactions and conclude their innocence by using the sensors. The sensors also helped him to know in advance if anyone posed a threat, thereby giving him sufficient time to react to any opponent. You're under arrest.
Everything you need to know about his weapons, armor, and suit. Robocop usually preferred using two weapons known as the NI-408 and an M2 battle rifle. The NI-408 was fitted on his right leg while the battle rifle was fitted on his left leg. Whenever Robocop felt he was in a threatening situation, his bodily systems would deploy these rifles all the way from his legs and he would then hold the rifles in his hand. For a brief period, Robocop even used the MP7A1 rifle instead of the M2. Robocop's first suit was silver in color and it was equipped with all sorts of sensors and weapons. Whenever he felt threatened, the suit systems would detect the danger on its own and deploy the necessary weapons required. He also had another black suit, and his suits were given different names depending on their updated versions. After his original 1.0 suit, a new 2.0 suit was then developed, and it was almost similar to the older suit, except that it was covered in a desert camouflage pattern. The 2.0 suit was later updated to a 2.1 version, and the suit's design was changed to a forest camouflage pattern. There are two more versions of this suit, known as the 2.2 and 2.3 suits, and these suits had a dark green and navy blue camouflage pattern respectively. Finally, Robocop's suit was upgraded to a 3.0 version which had a black design and it was created at the demand of Raymond Sellers. After this suit was damaged, Robocop returned to the 1.0 suit for some time while this 3.0 suit was being repaired. Would Robocop die if someone shot him in the exposed lower part of his face? While Robocop's body appears quite invincible, fans have often wondered if he can be defeated if someone targets the lower part of his face that is exposed and not covered with a mask. Murphy's lower part of the face was left as it is to give Robocop a sense of humanity and to even honor Murphy's contribution to the creator of this cyborg. However, Robocop cannot be defeated if anyone shoots him in the exposed part of his face since his skull is made of metal and other alloys. While his face had a human appearance, there was a metal skull underneath the mask of flesh, and no bullet or weapon could penetrate through this metal and destroy him. Releasing proteins, fats, minerals, and carbs. Did Robocop need nutrition to survive? Robocop's body still consisted of a few working organic systems even after he turned into a cybernetically enhanced being, which meant that he did require nutrition to keep going. His body was not fueled by batteries or technology, but at the same time, he also did not have a full-fledged digestive system that absorbed nutrients and gave him the energy to keep going. He just needed to consume some amounts of nutrients to ensure that the existing organs in his body were not starving or suffering from any form of infection or poisoning. He required regular blood cleansing and bacterial screening, an external supply of hormones, anti-inflammatory corticoids, and some antibiotics to ensure that these organic systems were well taken care of. Without the help of external nutrients, Robocop's organic systems would become infected due to the cybernetic enhancements and even stop functioning, resulting in a serious threat to his existence. If something like Robocop existed in real life, could it survive? In today's technologically advanced world, AI and robotic technology have gone too far, and we are not too far from creating something similar to Robocop. There is also new research in brain interfacing technology that shows a lot of promise, and it is possible to have a fully working robotic body connecting to one's brain and spinal cord in around 100 years or so. Of course, one crucial issue here is that we need a compact power source to power a cyborg's body around the clock. If something like Robocop were created in the real world, it would also raise the question of whether we could put a human brain inside a machine. We can connect a robot to one's brain, but it is challenging to put a brain inside a robot's body and expect it to function well. The human brain is connected to the entire body with the help of the nervous system. Creating a complex nervous system within a robot's body is also something that is only possible in fiction, at least with the existing technology. Research suggests that fresh supplies of blood and signal connections would ensure that the brain has an unlimited lifespan, so we could only wait for a few decades and see what more can be accomplished in the field of robotics. I really have to tell you something. Is it possible for Robocop to reproduce? Before turning into Robocop, Alex Murphy was a human man who even had a son with his wife. However, Robocop did not have the ability to reproduce, as his body did not even have all human organs. He was programmed to be a robot, and he behaved robotically, barely displaying the same desires or mannerisms as a human. It is unlikely that Robocop could reproduce or father a child in this form, and this thought did not cross his mind during the course of the film. However, Robocop eventually learns the truth about his life and his past as Alex Murphy. In this case, Robocop could have finally wanted to father a child again after obtaining sentience. After slowly showing his human side again, it may be possible for him to reproduce again if he undergoes a few bodily enhancements and adjusts his new body to be able to father a child. Kill. 
Can someone kill or destroy Robocop? While Robocop was a pretty strong entity, his first suit was not advanced enough to protect him from destruction. Any gun or weapon with a .50 caliber could easily penetrate through the suit's material, thereby leaving him vulnerable to any attacks. At the end of the day, Robocop was also a machine and his programming could have been hacked by any individual. He was first programmed to kill, but he eventually overrode his programming and even killed the CEO of Omnicorp, highlighting that Robocop's programming could easily be overridden. Moreover, he also required nutrition to keep his organic systems running, and his cybernetic body required constant maintenance and attention to keep running smoothly. If Robocop's maintenance were neglected, it would not be very difficult to defeat him. Fans have even debated whether a cyborg such as Robocop would stand a chance against the Terminator, and they seem to believe that the Terminator would win in this fight by a long shot. While Robocop has some human elements, Terminator is a military unit designed to be a killing machine and would easily defeat Robocop. Besides, the Terminator's mechanisms are pretty advanced compared to Robocop's technology and it would be challenging for Robocop to beat him. At the end of the day, Robocop is quite a powerful cyborg, but he has his limitations and is most certainly not invulnerable. Area. Conclusion to sum it up, Robocop was quite a fascinating entity and his body worked in fascinating ways that captured the audience's attention. From cybernetic enhancements to functioning organic systems, Robocop's anatomy is definitely quite a work of art, and his character creation was quite ahead of its time. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.